You know what the army wants to do? They want you to sign up again. Oh, how I feared that the army would offer me some, Uncle Sam would offer me something attractive to sign up. You know what they did right after I joined the army? I had some college already, and most men did not. And they said, you, you make such a superior pilot. We'd like to send you to this school. Now, I knew they were lying. They were lying. <laughs> because already I had worn glasses since I was 12 or 13. I knew two things when that happened. Well, one thing for sure. I would never be a major league baseball player. I knew that the, the joy of my life was gone because I had to start wearing glasses. Now here I am in the army and they're offering me, you just sign your name on the line. And you will get the training why it will fit you for service, perhaps as a high, high paid, you know, aviation type on in, in private carriers and when you're out. And you've got a chance to fly perhaps helicopters with any of your training. Maybe you'll be a, a part of a team with a bomber or something. Whoa! Sign up! Hold me back! Hold me back! <laughs> I was a little worried that I'd be offered, you know what they do today? They offer big bucks. They offer bonuses of many thousands if you sign up. I was a little scared. Short, but you know, you're not really short until you're on that plane flying home and you're sworn out. And you got your papers, your orders, and you're a civilian. You know what? They wanted me to re up. Be careful about re upping. Now, the re upping last week, last Saturday, that's a good one. 25 years of marriage, and we've all got a date, don't we? 25 years from now for the 50th anniversary. <laughs> hey, that was so happy and wonderful last week. A real thing in essence. A glory to God. God has blessed, and we have faith, and we will still bless more. My friends, in a way, the Lord's table is that in our experience every month. When <clears throat> my wife and I first got married, I taught school for a while, a Christian school, and we were part of a Baptist church upstate, about 200 miles north of here, and they had the Lord's Table, get this, they had the Lord's Table once every three months, and they had that once every three months in the evening service. You know, you miss one evening service, and many people did attend the evening services, but you miss one evening service, and potentially you could go six months without the Lord's table. Now, <clears throat> I've already told you the three reasons I almost always do give, but I wonder why, do you notice what it says, it speaks about the Lord's table in 1 Corinthians 11, it says, as oft as you do this, <coughs> this remember it to me, oft has <clears throat> about two-thirds of the letters for the word often, often. In other words, if there's something we perhaps as even Woodside Baptist Church should be doing, maybe we should have the Lord's table more often than we do. But once every three months, and then at a, at a fairly obscure service, what was the reasoning behind that? And I think, ooh, this table. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this to a bad. Do this as a witness. What else is the Lord's table? It's again where I come. And I don't worry about anybody else, but I'm before God. And I want to experience Him. And I want to offer Him something. Myself again for another month. Oh God, I'm re-upping. How about you today? You see, we marvelously, wonderfully do have a God we can trust. And we must trust Him. Turn to the book of Jeremiah. In the Old Testament, Jeremiah 17 and verse 7, and then verse 8. Jeremiah 17, verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Blessed. We are blessed. How can I have the blessing of God? It says, trust him. Blessed is that one. And here's a little extra. 
whose hope the Lord is. There is blessing in our trusting Him. There is blessing in our having hope in Him. Verse 8. This is like a verse in the Psalms. For He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when He cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be anxious in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Notice verse 9. I'd be remiss if I didn't point out this verse as the patience come. Verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But go back to verse 8, and think about this. A tree planted by the waters. When a tree is planted by the waters, that tree is not threatened with lack of water. That tree has sufficient water, abounding water. Well, that tree shall not be bothered when the little verse say it says, great heat cometh, great trouble cometh, potential trial cometh. But because I'm near the water, my leaf shall be green, and I will not be anxious in a year, in the year of drought. It may be seasonal, it may be very understandable the trouble I'm going through. It may not be an extra trouble, but in that trouble, and in every trouble, these years, these days, these hours, these moments of drought, there is richness, there is moisture, there is life in my God. I can trust my God. And again, verse 7, Blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. My hope, isn't that what we say? My hope is in the Lord. It better be. Psalm 16, verse 8 and 9. I have, said David, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. There's a good uh, <coughs> Martin Luther King Jr. statement, isn't it? That, that song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. And David says, I have set the Lord always before me. And because of that, why he at my right hand provides, I shall not be moved. Verse 9. Why, because of this, my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. And notice the last part of verse 9. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Oh, wow, wonderful that religion, our religion can affect our mind, our spirit. But notice, this hope, this relationship, and this trust have to do with even the physical. My flesh, says David, verse 9, my flesh also shall rest in hope. I have both physical and mental and social and spiritual consequences joys and privileges. There's this ministry to God, the promises of God. As I trust Him and trust Him I may, these are my joy and these are real. Psalm 33, verse 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear Him, upon those who hope in His mercy. Again, the blessing of the Lord, the privilege of course His eye, you know, He is Always present, all seeing, but there's something special about relationship as we have it with Him, and that relationship is flavored with fear, meaning their worship. We relate to Him in a worshipful way. It is our privilege, our joy, those who have that experience, that condition, that present. State that experience every day why they have the eye of the Lord especially on them his blessing also signaling upon those who hope in his mercy this is not a merciful world how many true friends do we have how many would give us a good kick if it was to their advantage if they had opportunity but we have a God who is merciful who loves and cares and we can rejoice in Him. We need to fear Him, acknowledge Him, have our hope utterly in Him. Yes, even in His mercy, when others will not be merciful to us. Psalm 71, verse 5. 
for thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. Let's have a little fun. Brother <coughs> Liddell gave his testimony. Where are you, Brother Liddell? Is he here? There he is back there, hiding in the back. Brother Liddell, shame on you. <laughs> now guess how old Liddell is. He looks about 20 years of age, doesn't he? Some of us are blessed that we look years older than we really are. Of course, you're saying, Pastor, you just shave that beard, it'll prove things a lot. <laughs> Listen, please believe me, it wouldn't approve things a lot. But uh, I only think 25. You know, some of you ladies in this church, frankly, have amazed me for years. I just cannot believe how old sometimes you said you are, and I just think, no. Nah. Rodell is 30 years of age. And as he's described, a lot of the trouble he's gone through has been recurring, like the seasons. He's had the pain of sin. He's gone through deep trouble. He's taken family through deep trouble. He's been hurt. Now what if, what if he had trusted the Lord early in his life, and that had been a saving relationship, a born-again relationship begun with Christ by faith, the likelihood that he would have gone through anywhere is near what he has gone through. Not there. The promises of God. All thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Perfect? Nah. But there is a relationship between prayers, the example, the teaching. I give evidence that she's not here. My wife's family. My wife's family. And some of your families. Not my family. Not my family from my background, but in some of your families. My wife's family. From youth. I notice 71 5. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust, O blessed thought. And blessed should it be true. Thou art my trust from my youth. Oh, even in my own case, I was saved at 12, 13 perhaps. How I wish that I had earlier trusted Jesus. And some of you in this room would say with me, why I didn't get saved until relatively recently. And I've gone through things that I would not wish on anybody else for their going through. Oh, that I had trusted when I was young. You know, when you have distrusted and had no place for trust in your life from your very earliest days, to have someone truly to trust is a marvelous, wonderful, incredible gift. But to still have trust, to find it to undiminished, to find it not threatened, wow, we need the power of God, the Holy Spirit in our lives, that victory here. But the Word says that one of the results Verse 5, Thou art my hope, O Lord God, and Thou art my trust from my youth. Verse 6 says, By Thee have I been held up from, my, from the womb. I knew You and experienced You. I can acknowledge now, he says, You from the very earliest moments of my existence. Oh, the blessing when every one of those years has been characterized by trust in Him. Our last verse, Romans 15, verse 4. Romans 15, verse 4. By what means do we have hope? Romans 15, 4 says, Whatever things were written in earlier times were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. The ministry of the Word in our lives, the possession of the Word, verse 4 says, produces somehow patience and comfort which themselves affect us, these things from the Word. And the object is that we might have hope. What rich lives potentially we could have if we didn't always live in doubt and fear. 
For indeed, we can trust him. Because we can trust him, we can trust his promises. And there is joy. And you know something about it? Perfect love casteth out fear. God doesn't want us to walk in fear in this city. He wants us to trust him. God doesn't want us to walk in fear in our bodies, even when our bodies give us some fearful moments. He wants us to trust him. Hebrews 11. Can you forget these words? Have you forgotten? That's maybe why I should repeat them more often. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. If your mate is to tell you and remind you constantly how he or she can't trust you, how disrespectful, how dissing that is. And when by our word and by our life we walk as just the world walks and do not live by faith trusting him, we are dissing our God. And he wants nothing more. He doesn't care about our monies. He doesn't basically care about anything about us. But our trust placed in him. And when our trust is not truly placed in Him, we displease Him and we dis His name, we disrespect His name. We're all different, aren't we? Romans 15, 1 says, We that are, that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good edification. Even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. Paul writes, for whatever things were written concerning this and all of the Old Testament, in earlier times were written for our learning, for our benefit, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. God intends for us to have hope, and we can have it as we trust Him. My friends, trust Him. A statement at the bottom of the page, the first page, by A.W. Tozer. I think there could be no question, but that if we let the Bible decide right or wrong, the evangelicals are right in their creedal position. Even the skeptic H.L. Mencken said, quote, If the Bible is true, the fundamentalists are right. Now, he did not grant the truth of the Bible, but he was sharp enough to see that the basic doctrines taught by fundamentalists were identical with those taught by the Bible. Now again, our faith is less in the Bible, it's more in the God of the Bible. We can have faith and depend upon the product of His action because we have faith in Him. If you have faith in Him, then you can trust this Word, you can trust His promises, you can trust Him in your daily life, but it begins with faith in Him, trust in Him. I wish each of us Hope in his calling. That is not a week of tenuous, watered-down faith or trust, but a wholehearted giving of ourselves to him because he is 100% trustworthy, glorious in his righteousness. Our Father, thank you for your mercy. And thank you for sure, such reassuring and convicting scripture. A greater walk with thee, a deeper walk is within our reach. But it comes from relationships with thee. A church can be helpful. The Bible can be very helpful. Brothers and sisters, their example, their encouragement can be helpful. But most of all, we need you. And experience daily, continually with you. May it be so.